a video that's going to be all spliced together from multiple evenings. Um, I created a four inch dust collection system that I like. It's not something that Yeti Tool has really looked at or seen yet. Um, but I have been talking with them with a couple of customers as, as I've been helping them with their new machines. And uh, so I want to get this video up and spliced. Um, and we'll just see what it how it works. Um, there's some issues that we need to look at uh, or users need to figure out uh, possibly a better way to do it. I'm open to suggestions, shoot me a note. Um, but basically here's what we've got. Okay, this is a few more details on how I am converting to a uh, 650 CFM regular four inch dust collector. Um, I used a four inch by three inch gutter connector to three inch backside, three inch 90 degree elbow, and then a four inch circular to three inch circular uh, connector at the end of the four inch vacuum hose. I've got it run overhead uh, and then when I connect it to the wall the, the PVC boom will pivot and so I can use it here at the smart bench where I can pull it over to the other side of the shop on the other side of the, uh, uh, cab the gray cabinets that you see there. Um, so a typical shop vac pulls 150 or so CFM per minute, um, well, cubic feet per minute, so it's redundant. Uh, a a uh, four inch dust collector will pull 650 or 1200 depending on the model. Uh, so I'm running with a Jet 650 on the back side of the cabinets there and uh, we'll see what that does uh, for picking up the debris in this wharf. And a lot of this started because I was doing nested base construction and um, if cutting at high speed with a, an 8 millimeter bit or a thicker bit, um, you create a lot of de debris and if that debris lands in your upper beam and you don't keep it cleaned out, you can have skipping um, because the wheels ride in this track as well. So the easiest way to fix that is to just cover it and I'll show you some ways of doing that. Um, the next step, since I already had a, a 650 CFM dust collector, was to look at a way to hook that up. So I don't think the other videos really show it, but I hooked up a 4-inch, this is sewer, 4-inch uh, PVC sewer uh, or drain pipe, so it's the thinner walled stuff. I put a 45 degree in it and a cap at this end up here. So this 45 degree, that takes suction in and down, it comes over. I'm going to connect it to the wall and probably still have a support line. Uh, from this stud here or this uh, metal piece here to help hold it because that's pretty heavy by the time you make it whatever it is 10 15 feet long uh, but from here it just drops down it's got a slinky hose four inch goes to a four to three connection and then standard PVC fittings from there a 90 degree elbow three inch to three inch and a, a four by three uh, gutter connection that I've modified I'll show you the modifications in uh, in a different video. Or it'll all be spliced in on this. And then I'm holding them together, just hooking them with this Velcro attachment here. Now, yes, I'm putting some... It's got a very little bit of pull on the, on the motors. Not much at all. Um, because we're not supporting much. Most, most of the support is being done uh, by the plate. And it's not heavy pieces. So I put this back on and pull the velcro up. Sorry, don't get one-handed. Just a very simple little setup. It does come on top of the console, so yeah, I can't see it all the time, so I wanted to be able to, to pull it out easily and get it out, out of it. I can still use my factory setup on the back. Um, all the blue tape is... <laughs> it's a different video. That's all about the AMB two-second startups. Um, hmm. That's a video that uh, I have to decide whether to make or not. So it does, it does kind of co cover the console. Of course, I can pull the console out and work on it or just lift it up out of the way. Very simple. It does not touch the console. That's my finger touching it, but it doesn't touch the console when it's in place. Uh, dust collection was great. I did nested base construction. Um, that'll be toward the end of the video, but I don't know that I took a video of it at, at the very end, but it was significantly better, multiple t times better. Uh, this is definitely something that you need to look at, and maybe we can find a better way. Um, this may not be the best way to do it. Uh, when I hang this on and don't hang it on, if I'm not using holding the phone, I can put my hand here and, and, and do this, and you you just don't feel it move. It's, it's, it's very light and very non-offensive to what the, the Z-head's doing, as far as I can tell. 
So let's get on with the video. One of the other things to do is to cover your upper X beam. I have guys cutting and it's it's they could be doing corian or whatever, but they're getting a lot of debris and swarf in their X beam. Well, the wheels roll over this. So if you have a lot of debris in here, you're likely to have the wheels skip, and so it will skip in the X direction. So, very simple. Put a piece of plywood over it, tape it, and that'll work just fine coming back and forth. Okay, so I just added painter's tape to it. Come back to the setup. High speed moves toward it. It's above the console. It's no problem. If I need to look at the console, I just lift it up. And again, I could put a hot glue gun, put a magnet here and here, and I could flip it up out of the way, move it back out of the way, tell it to go. And by doing that, I'm covering my X-beam. So there's not going to be any debris getting in this area. This is really simple. So we want to do it probably front and back. And again, the way I've set up my four inch setup. If I do that, I can still use my factory dust collection because I need to be able to demo it that way for customers or potential customers. But I can still put a piece of, let me just disconnect it. I can still slide the same thing in and just have one cut that allows for the uh, plate here. Or, or just do it that way, but I, I'd rather cover this gap and just eliminate that issue. Um, so, Again, the smart bench is, is a great smart tool, but you can tweak it based on what tools you use, how much debris you're throwing. If I'm using an eighth inch cutter to cut cabinet parts, that would work fine. It's just slower. That's your choice though. It's also less swarf, so there's less cleanup and less uh, dust extraction. So this is still running through a uh, dust deputy type setup, and that should drop the great percentage of it. But it, uh, it's, it's very simple. The basic parts and design are pretty simple. Here's a finished unit. I took a four inch by three inch gutter connector with a three inch backside. Um, and if you look at this, if I set it down at the same level, it's almost perfect to fit under the, sh the uh, plate here. Uh, this is a, the version 1.2 base plate, uh, version one. Is a little different shape it's just straight across the front but they both work so i'll have two different connectors depending on which which z head i'm using so the goal here what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut a slot i'm going to leave the top of this still full thickness and you want this at the bottom to be on the bottom i'm going to leave this full thickness and cut a slot in this to fit around the base plate here so it's going to look like this in the process of doing that, you have to cut off some of, you have to back set it, possibly. This is for the other one, but I had to sand away some of the front of this. And this is a little too tight to go in between the upper rails. So this is the one as purchased, and it's tight, and you need it needs to slide with the Z head. So I just put it on the belt sander, and I thinned my walls, basically I put the two side walls I thin them down half the thickness that they were, roughly. It's got plenty of room in here now. And so on the version one base plate, it'll be on there like this. I've got these just Velcro straps. These are strap locks for um, you know wiring hoses and stuff like that. They're 23 inches long. Um, and these will come around the back side. Okay, just swapped it out. So I put the 90 degree elbow on the one that's already pre-cut. And there we go. And these will wrap around and hold it on. Sorry for all the ca camera movement. So with the Velcro on there, this is easily movable. And, and we'll uh, use the four inch dust collection. What you have to remember is dust collectors, the four inch dust collector, that's a jet 650, so it pulls 650 CFM. A typical shop vac may pull 150 cubic feet per minute. That's a significant difference. Um, and you can do this, I mean, this could be, I've got this coming across over the cab, over these tall cabinets here, uh, my pipe piping. It's basically gonna be a boom set up like this. I did a 45 degree in it to help support it, and then it comes out, I think it's probably 50, 10 feet long. Uh, 
maybe 12 total. I don't remember because of the, the splice in it. Uh, but that's going to be connected to the dust collector on the back side of these cabinets. I'm going to connect that to the wall with U brackets so it can pivot and I can turn it whichever direction I need to do it. I may have another smart bench in here set up on another in another location or set up another boom. Um, but that way I can get proper uh, dust collection to the source where it needs to go. Um, the way mine set up, it's going to flop over like this. I may put a little bit of a of a connection here, a little lift up, uh, and just run it over one of the support wires that's up on the top of the ceiling. You can see it where the yellow line is, yellow rope is going over. Um, it doesn't seem to catch, and I can move my smart bench to the full extent of so the four by eight sheet, no problem, and everything works fine. Um, the way I cut the little uh, slots in it, I just used uh, an oscillating tool. It cuts the PVC very quickly. And remember, once you thin these, you want to thin them first. And I basically brought them half the thickness of the original one, just by eye eyeballing it. Uh, and then I'm going to cut the slots in the top side of this. Not, and think of the offset. We want this to sit on the bottom. And then I'm going to cut the slots here. And adjust it to sit on this face. Um, so I'll have one connection for this version 2 base or 1.2 base and one for the original base. It'll work great real quick to swap out. Uh, if I want to do a demo with just the existing uh, dust collection, that's all around the back of the Z heads. So that's no problem to do, and that way I can keep things very uh, factory type setup. But again, the smart bench is so powerful because you can tweak it to be the machine that you need it to be. Some people don't need this additional dust collection if they're cutting some plastics and they're cutting at a slower speeds or they're, do, they're cutting with a smaller bit. Uh, the dust collection is very adequate. Uh, but if I'm going to run a big, an 8 millimeter bit and cut cabinet parts, that's a lot of debris that's going to come out of a nest of a full sheet. So I want to collect it there at the machine rather than have it spew all over the floor and everything and have to clean it up again. It doesn't make sense. So let your machines do the work for you. And I also want to keep them out of, keep it out of the, the trough too. Uh, so again, those little plexiglass covers, or in my case, plywood covers, they, they work great. Um, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call Eric Schiller at Yeti Smart Bench. You can go to the website, yetismartbench.com, and fill in the contact sheet. And if you have any questions or need any help, and I'll be happy to help you. So this is the first test cut of the new dust collection system. The two flute, it's two straight flute Freud bit, uh, quarter inch depth of cut, half inch material, two passes and it'll be done. I didn't do an onion, uh, return onion skin that I know of, I may have, that's my standard, but I'm just testing the fit right now so I really don't care if it's a little, if these edges are a little sloppy. Tell you there's no debris on the on the field there's some in the in the curve line but that's it second pass is taking it all out so this first run is just checking to see if these slip joints are going to fit properly and then do the tool adjustments to make it fit just right okay there was there was a, no there wasn't it's just two passes it's doing the second uh, of the two stringers that are going to fit together. Just speed it up some. A little better. This is the A and B 800 watt. This is the standard model. Of course, we have the standard, the Precision, and the Precision Pro. Again, there's no debris, and it's cleared it all the way out now. That, that's ready to go. Got to do thicker tabs. Tabs did not hold it, it looks like. I had tabs on this outside end. And, it, and it's loose. And tabs. Okay, I adjusted the material thickness to closer to the 0.465 that it is. Because I mic one of the pieces that came out of here. Uh, same exact setup. I just copied it over and moved it. And I did spread them a little further apart. But the tabs are on the outside, not the inside, and they're on this outside of this one. And this one held, so now I'll be able to check these fittings a little better. 
It's a loud bit because it's a straight cutter. But it's doing a great job. It's nice and clean. And the cut, the pickup from the dust collector, I really like. I hate cleaning up the floor. You can see stuff down there, everything that I've cut, some padak and some mahogany and stuff like that. So this is a nice, inexpensive little upgrade. Should work fine. I'm gonna test it and see how it does. And if it needs any modifications, I'll let you know. I know the microphone picks up the bit chatter and, the, and the, the screaming of the bit a lot more than it's actually doing. Uh, I've seen that on a couple videos because it doesn't necessarily sound bad, but then when you play it on the video, it's like, good Lord. Um, but you get where you can hear the bits and you know whether they're cutting clean or not. Now this is picking up. This plywood does have, it's the stringy crap that I hate. This will clog up the dust chute if you're working from the, the factory dust collector. Um, and it may clog this one up too because it, I mean, that's, that's a nine inch piece. Um, and that's a problem. So a good core makes a big difference in the materials. You know, you, you save some money sometimes and you buy a cheaper material, but then you have to deal with this and you have to babysit the machine. That's not worth it. And again, this is not a Yeti product. This is something that I did to, to make it more efficient in my shop the way I need it. And that's the beauty of the Yeti Smart Bench is it, it gives you a, a way to make the tool work for the way you need it in your facility. So, um, this is not endorsed by Yeti Tool in the UK, but it works well for me.